Hello. Webcam vlog today. Basically, the weather sucked today, so I didn't go outside. It was just, just like stormy, windy, not fun. So I streamed on Twitch all day. I enjoyed that. That was nice. But uh, of course, there's no vlog, and it's currently three in the morning. Three a.m. The original video video idea I was gonna do, I was gonna react to comments, but then I'm reading through all the comments. I'm like, I've already read all of these. I've already re already responded to all of them. There's no point. No point. So if you want me to do a reacting to comments video coming up, leave some good questions or good comments. It doesn't have to be a question. Just leave a good comment and I'll respond in a video. Anyway, there is something I want to talk about. Something I've been meaning to talk about this, this, this whole week, but I've just kind of been letting the story escalate so I can yeah present it better. There's a thing in Canada happening that you might not know about because the mainstream media is not covering it. It's called the Freedom Convoy. It's a protest against vaccine mandates in Canada. Yeah, I just want to talk about it a little bit because it's, it's pretty wild what's happening and it's just not being covered. As far as I understand, a bunch of truckers got together in Canada to drive to Ottawa because that's where the government are, I believe. I don't really know. Protesting vaccine mandates. So all these truckers are now mandated. They have to get vaccinated to cross the border into America. They say that's not okay, obviously. It's not okay to force people to take a medical procedure just to work or visit restaurants. I mean, Canada's been having it pretty hard. So let's just watch some of this and I'll just talk over some bits. It's across the board for every single man, woman, and child across Canada. We've dealt with this for two years. You said two weeks to flatten the curve. We're two years later. Yeah, this thing's been going on for two years now. They lied to us. They're like, yeah, two weeks. Two weeks. I'm not saying there's a conspiracy here, but come on, two years? They've been playing us for two years now. I thought this was really interesting. They're delivering, like, diesel via horse and cart to get to the truckers, because all these truckers are just, they're basically barricading all these roads so no one can get coming in and out. Meaning these people are living in their trucks in the freezing weather, so they need, like, gasoline to keep the heating going and stuff like that. They've been hand delivering it. But then they, just... they brought this thing in. Like, <laughs> they got, they've got a diesel coming in, an awesome buggy, that's so funny. But then yeah, the police wouldn't let them pass, so they had to hand deliver it. So here's some, just, just some of the footage of it, it's so beautiful to watch. I love protests, I think protests are amazing. We all come together in support of something. Something that matters. I would love to visit Canada. But yeah, just overwhelming support. Trains all came there as well, that's pretty cool. Yes. The trucks and other vehicles lining up at Southern Alberta's busy Canada-US border crossing. What we'd like to see is everything go back to the way it was in 2019 before all this started. Yeah. All the mandates lifted, all the restrictions gone, and that put into legislation, so this does not happen again. Yeah, I'm in support of that, 100%. Government MLA joined the protests, sharing on social media, I brought the grandkids down to the Coots border today to show them the importance of standing up for freedom and liberty. Of the protest, in fact, we spoke How with a number of truckers that? who this are now stuck here on. and just want to get home. I'm stuck like a part of the three day. No shower, nothing, anything. Do you feel safe? No, 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 anybody, no, no safe. Carrying loads of goods intended for Calgary grocery stores, several truckers tell Global News they feel like hostages, caught up in a blockade that does not represent. They've even got tractors there and everything. See, that's the thing. When you when you block roads, you're blocking people that don't want to be a part of it, but they're now forced to be a part of it. That's tricky, but it's also the best way to get everyone's attention. You have to just do stuff that unsettles people and disrupts their lives for a few days so that the message can get across. Otherwise, people ignore the message because it's convenient to ignore things. Look at that. The police are just useless. They can't do nothing here. They ha how do you move a bunch of trucks? You can't. They're, 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 they're the biggest things that exist on roads. You can't move them. And they also deliver all of your food and produce, like everything, clothes, everything gets delivered by truck. So if the trucks stop working, the shops no longer are filled. There will then be a food shortage. I don't think that's happening yet. I still, they're somehow still getting food. I don't know how to do it yet. 
but eventually, if it's only been like five days, eventually you're gonna start running out of food because these people deliver it. Like truckers have all the power, if you think about it. If they, without them, we can't do anything. Can't eat. Thousands of protesters and truckers are marching on the streets of wow. Ottawa against look the. At, look at that! Like that's crazy to see. That's a huge protest. Government's COVID-19 yeah. measures. In some places, they're being joined by Sikh immigrants from India. Pictures shared on social media show Sikh protesters expressing solidarity with the truckers. I love my freedom and my liberty as much as everybody does. And I hate the government telling me what to do with force. That's all I'm here for. It's about choice, it's not about vaccine. And we are all together, we are all Canadians, we are all truckers. <laughs> These protesters are no longer just about COVID-19 restrictions. They have turned into a movement against the current leadership. A movement that is finding overwhelming support. <laughs> So they they made a GoFundMe for the truckers to f like get them fed and get fuel to them while they're not working. They raised ten million and then GoFundMe like paused it. And apparently they are refunding people. But then again, how do you how do you like organize that? How do you get ten million bucks to these individual drivers? They had how do you distribute that? That's why these like these GoFundMe's like all of these uh, crowdsourcing funding things they don't really work. Someone's profiting somewhere. It's just a quick cash grab for a lot of people. It's not actually being distributed properly. It's not being it's not being put to where you think it is. So that's why I've never jumped in on any of these things. Racing campaign. The protesters suspect this has been done on the behest of the Canadian government. In some places, incidents of violence are also being reported. On Tuesday evening, some protesters allegedly assaulted police officers who tried breaking up a trucker blockade. Allegedly. The protesters, however, refuse all such claims. They say the establishment is trying to suppress their movement through misleading stories. That'll happen. You'll get some. You'll get some lies saying, "Hey, yeah, I'm a naughty, naughty truckers, naughty." There was violence over here, trying to discredit everything, and then you just counter that with, "Like, well, hang on a second. You guys are just lying. Like, is there any proof of any of this?" But yeah, this whole week I've just been watching the story and just watching it all unfold. It's so great. It's so great to me. I don't know why. Like, look at this. They've got tractors just blocking streets in the city. It's so crazy to see tractors and skyscrapers together. But yeah, these like, Canadians just want to go back to work, you know? They're being forced to take a job just to work. They're taking their freedoms away. That's the, it's, it's, like A lot of them have said they don't care about the, the vaccine. They'll take it. They don't care. It's not about that. It's about being forced to have a medical procedure just to go back to the life you already had. It should be your choice. What happened to pro-choice? I mean, what happened to choice? So, like, they just ripped that freedom away. If you if you let them do that, then they can get away with anything. They can they can force you to do anything. Like, this is a test. If you are willing to accept a medical procedure just to have the life you already had for a an illness that isn't that bad, then what's the future? What's next? Like, what are they going to do to us next? Let's say you can't go outside without a gun and then everyone has to get a gun like they can really do anything I'm just pulling scroll, I'm just pulling out random ideas here but if you think about it if you let them do this to us the governments of the world because they're all working together on this if you let them do things like this then there is no future as for us it's, we're, we're doomed um, they'll get away with anything so we have to fight back we have to push back like the police in every one of these shots are outnumbered by us the government is outnumbered by us because we are the masses we have all the power. If we give our power away, then they'll they'll just continue to abuse abuse it. They'll just continue to push us down. There is a massive wealth transfer happening during this pandemic. It's the the top 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 percent of people of rich people are getting richer. They found a way to manipulate us into giving them more money. It's just bizarre how it's all happening. We mustn't argue amongst ourselves amongst each other because none of us are to blame for any of this. Um, the people abusing the power are the ones at the top. Like we should be fighting them, yeah, not each other. They want us to fight each other because it's a distraction. Then we don't look at who's actually responsible. Many nations have already said we're dropping everything. All right, so I'm really surprised that, can't, that, that the Canadian government and the, even the provincial governments, a lot of them are really hanging on tight to this, and I don't understand why. It's day eight, the second Saturday, that people have come to Parliament to make one demand. A total end to COVID mandates and restrictions across the country. But the federal government remains steadfast. No negotiations. We came down here to support my brother-in-law, Johnny. This is his truck right here. 
He drives for uh, Gerard Transport. We came down to support him and also for the freedoms for our country. Um, we're really disappointed in what our government has done with mandating stuff. We're not against the vaccine. We don't care about that. But what we do care about is the fact that we have to have the vaccine to go to restaurants and travel. David Rempel came to Ottawa with his family there to express go. their frustration. With Man, put it, put it real, real easy there. That's, that's exactly the point. Is no one cares that about the man that getting the thing? People that want it will take it. It's just that they're trying to force it on you. And like why? Who's benefiting from everyone being jabbed? Think about it. Who is benefiting? Who are the small amount of people benef benefiting from forcing you to be jabbed? Just think about it. Who who's benefiting? Where, who's getting the money for this? Who's making the money? Just follow the money. It's all about money. Everybody. With restrictions, Literally everything is about money. Just everything. It's never been about health. No one cares about your health. They don't care about you. They just want money. Sorry. Alone, Kelly Hale from Kemptville lost his restaurant because he refused to enforce mask mandates or check for vaccine steps. Like, people are losing their establishments because they're refusing. Because they're protesting. They're just losing their restaurants. Like, how do you fight it? You have to fight it in court then. That's such a ball ache. So yeah, that's, that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to bring that to your attention because it's something that's happening in real time. It's happening right now. You have to be paying attention to see things like that. It took me like a day or two before I even noticed that was happening. Like some stuff slipped into my Instagram stories and I'm like, oh, hang on a second. What's happening in Canada right now? It's hard to get these stories out because they, the revolution won't be televised. Like You have to look for this kind of stuff. You have to look at what's happening outside of your little space. Look at the world. What is what's going on? And how can we get involved? How can we support? Because protests like this are changing history. We need stuff like this. We can't allow them to keep abusing their power, which is what's What's happening? Okay, enough of me talking about things. You know, I usually don't share my thoughts on all this kind of stuff because I get in trouble for it. But hey, if I stay silent, I am complicit with mandates. And I just wanted to say that I am not. I am in support of protests and truckers and freedoms. I'm in support of freedoms. I like passive movements where I feel good watching it. Well done. I am. If I was a Canadian, I would be out there with them. That is all from this Welsh boy. See you tomorrow.